God so loved the world. Amen? Amen. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Amen. You may be seated. If you need an announcement sheet, raise your hand. The usher will give you one. And I hope that you all, did you all get a bookmark? Okay. So um, those that came early, we didn't get bookmarks to you. Arlette's got her hand raised for an announcement sheet. And Linda and Don. <laughs> and we've got bookmarks at the um, foyer that I wanted to use. They're from previous National Days of Prayer. So we'll make sure we get those to you before you leave today. And we wanted everyone to have a bookmark. Everyone, even the kids, if they want one, you can have one. Because we are trying to get rid of them, actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> but we have brand new ones for those that come this Thursday. So, And on the back of it, it has the seven prayer points that we pray every year for National Day of Prayer. So it would be a good reminder for you to be able to pray. So that's, that's a really good thing. And then um, this handout sheet that, I, that you have, on the back of it, that is the 2023 National Prayer for America. Now, they used to always say, pray it at noon, but they really don't say that anymore. But I think if you can pray it at noon or risk whenever you can during that day, um, that's from Ka Kathy Brinzel. She's the president of the National Day of, Prayer Ta Day of Prayer Task Force. And I would just ask you to pray that prayer on this Thursday, May 4th. So please pray. And we would encourage anybody who can, please come to the church at 7 a.m., we are having our um, prayer breakfast here. We'll have a hot breakfast, a good breakfast, and then we've got ministers and lay leaders um, praying, and we will be praying um, for our country and for all local situations too. So please be a part of that if you can. Otherwise, pray where you're at on that day. But make special prayer for our country and then use those prayer points in the back of the bookmark, and that will help you too to know what to pray for. So praise God. Arlet, are you having Bible study tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> okay, so so we won't have Bible study. Okay. So you will have it. Okay. Okay, so you will have Bible study. Now, I, need, I just found this out from Jane that there will not be Bible basics next Sunday, May 7th, because... That is um, the mother-daughter luncheon, and they have to get everything ready for that. So Jane won't have the time <laughs> to have um, Bible basics next Sunday morning, okay? So that will not be. And then we have something that's very unusual, but um, we're having baccalaureate tomorrow, May 1st, at 7 p.m. at the Harvest Christian Church. That's Church of Christ. It takes a while to get used to that. Um, our church in McCook was McCook Harvest Church, so I, whenever I read that, I was like, oh, that's my old church. <laughs> so Harvest Christian Church at um, 7 p.m. So you can there's refreshments afterwards. And then, as I said, the National Day of Prayer breakfast is Thursday, May 4th, 7 to 8. And then here are our 2023 graduates, Chad Holcomb and Evan Jacobitz. We don't have anybody from Superior this year. But um, they graduate this coming Saturday, May 6th, um, at 4 p.m. in Nelson. Now, Evan's reception is going to be a day before because his girlfriend's reception is the next day, so he didn't want to – she's from a different school, right? Okay, Sandy Creek. So that's why his is different. But you can, you can send his card to um, – the address, are you, will you be there, Royce, if they want to give it to you? Will you be going to Evan's reception? Okay, so if you have his card today and you wanted to give it to Royce, you can do that, okay? Or you can just mail it. And then Chad's, you can give it to me because I'm going to his. And that is going to be uh, Saturday, May 6th. But I'm going to be at my nephew's. My nephew's having a track meet and an all-school play on Thursday and Friday. So I'll be there, and then I'll come back on Saturday for the, the graduation in Nelson. And so then Chad's celebration will be that right after the, the um, graduation on Saturday. Then Kiara Henry, hers won't be until Saturday, May 20th, but the entire church has been invited. Or if you want to send a card, it's got the home address there you can send it to. So, all right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we decided to cancel. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. We need to cancel Healing School because after um, National Day of Prayer, we're going to get the tables ready for the mother-daughter luncheon. 
And so we're doing that right away. And it just wouldn't be hard to do all of that. So, yeah, we're, we're canceling healing school for this Thursday. Okay. And this is your last day to give for Rama Day, International Rama Day. And we're gonna, there's a really neat video that they made for it. We'll, have, we'll play that next week because it really will touch your heart and just kind of show you what Rama's doing all around the world. And it's, it's really a, a well-done video. So we'll do that next week. But we wanted to, to get the money raised in order to be able to give it to Rama during that time. So then starting this Wednesday, if you want to give for our um, missions project, it's going to be for camp. Now, we just have six kids going to camp this year, not as many, but if we go over what we need, then we just keep it for the next year because we have about $750 left from last year, which is kind of nice to have some extra money there, and so we would encourage you to continue to give to camp and keep some money in that fund so we can make sure kids can get to camp, and we're thankful for that, and we'll just believe God that we're going to have more. So any questions about that? But it's called um, Covenant Cedars, and it's um, by north of Hordeville. It's past Aurora, and it's, yeah, by Hordeville. It's really a great place. Yes. Wonderful time. Well, I, we've been going there about 10 years, so it's really good. Okay. And make sure that you pray the prayer for America on the back. And I think that's just about everything, I think. Oh, yes, I just about forgot. Uh, this Tuesday, and we'll get this in the announcements next week, but this Tuesday at 6 o'clock, 6 to 6.30, we're going to start our prayer for the um, youth rally, for the Todd Becker Foundation Youth Rally, and I'm going to invite other ministers to come too. But from 6 to 6.30, before Grub and Grow, if anyone wants to come in, Royce, you need to show me the music if you can the day before I leave. Hopefully we can show me, show me how to do that. And so we'll start that this, this Tuesday. All right? Why don't you go around and greet everybody and tell them Jesus loves you and so do I.
Well, I'm supposed to, oh, there she is. So where did Jane Bartling go? She's kneeling down, okay. <laughs> She's here, Trish. Look over by Lyndall. <laughs> She's hiding from us. <laughs> so I'm going to let Jane come up here and kind of promote the mother-daughter luncheon. We didn't do that earlier. <laughs> We were just working on a recipe back there, so <laughs> you'll enjoy it next week when you come. I have to apologize that this is kind of last minute. So last week we began to sell tickets, and now we're down to just one week. Next Sunday is our luncheon. So I have tickets. They're $5 a piece, and uh, we can sell them today. I'll be here Wednesday night. I can sell them Wednesday night. And um, that by then I'd really like to have as many as we can by then so I know about how many are showing up. But if you have a friend or somebody last minute you want to invite and it works out, you just let me know. We'll add that. We'll add. We'll add. We, we don't want to turn anybody away. Last year we had a good 40 here, ladies, so um, we got a ways to go. So <laughs> come see me yet today, okay? The food? Do I have to tell you? Italian. Well, it's our theme. Okay, the, it's Mamma Mia, so it's kind of Italian. It's Americanized Italian, okay? <laughs> Is that, do you really want to know exactly what we're having? <laughs> we'll do you surprised. like lasagna? Yeah. Do, you, do you like fettuccine, chicken fettuccine? Yeah. Okay. Do you like Olive Garden salad? Yeah. Well, do you like strawberry desserts? All right, then you'll like it, so come. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thought she was going to say, then you'll have to go somewhere else. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, anyway, that sounds good. If, yeah, anyway. All right, we're talking time. Amen. All right, there we go. Get back on track here. <laughs> Some thoughts you shouldn't say, so I'll just keep it. <laughs> okay, anyway. All right, so what are we doing today? We're having an offering. Let's do that. And uh, so our project for the month is, uh, well, it's offering. Let me give it towards that and uh, give above and beyond. Um, our mission project for the month is uh, camp, and uh, so that'll be good. So if you want to be a part of that, just be towards that. And uh, anyway, there's always always plenty to do, always plenty to give towards. Amen. So just encourage you with that. So uh, so I got a scripture for you here. Just, uh, uh, in Corinthians, I don't know first or second. I'm not sure. It doesn't tell me about that probably no anyway okay so uh it's uh it's springtime right so it's planting season so this is when things get really crazy farmers are really busy and things are happening a lot going on out there and uh um so what would happen if the farmer just took out just went out to the edge of his field and just threw out a couple kernels and and that was it with all the stuff sitting there, all the seeds sitting there, the tractor sitting there, the fertilizers all, you know, every the planter, 70-row planter, whatever they got nowadays, you know. <laughs> <coughs> they're huge, no matter what, they're huge. Um, but then just decided just to go on the edge of his field and just throw a couple kernels, and, well, that's good for this year. So let's go, let's, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly, will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give us, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheer cheerful giver. One thing for sure from this, from this side of the pulpit, 
you're never going to be pushed or, or forced into giving anything. Just understand that and realize that. But I would encourage you, just like the farmer, if he's got all, you've got all the stuff you need. You've got in, in the spirit realm, you've got the tractor, you've got the fertilizer, you've got the planter, you've got all that stuff. But you have to be proactive. You have to be the one that plants. Amen. So in the, in the natural realm, we're, get, we're planting fields this time of year. I mean, they're planting everything they can plant. They're, it's just crazy. Sometimes we, we look at what they're doing and we shake our head and think that's too much, but they're planting everything they can. And they're, you know, they got, they've got advanced planters that use GPS that if your planter plugs up, it'll tell you, and you can go back up and plant the little bit over again. It's like, I mean, they got, it's crazy. But anyway, so are we that diligent? Are we planting that, that with that intensity or that, that plan of attack? So that's my encouragement this morning. Just, you know, not only this time of year, we should, we should be planting, but in the spirit realm, we can plant year-round. And we want to continuously do that. Be steady, be strong, and stay steady with that. Amen? So I just want to encourage you with that. Just stay steady in every area you can find. Just keep looking, keep looking. Look for individuals you can help or encourage. Look for opportunity to give. You know, there's there's plenty, plenty, plenty of places to give towards. Amen. All right. So, but never, never feel pushed or uh, like somebody's making you do it. But do it from your heart. Do you know? Respond to what God has done for you in that area. Amen. All right. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for all you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you for the truth. Thank you, Father, for helping us to see and helping us to do all we need to do. We just thank you, Lord, that you're working in us and working through us to help accomplish everything you want us to do. We just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's do our confession. As I, take, as I tithe and give offerings, I'm leaving you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotion, sales and commission, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, Discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills to treat, bills paid off, blessings that increase to greater victories in every circumstance. I thank you, Lord, for meeting all my needs, have more than enough to give to know the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Oh, mm-hmm. 
Jesus. Just worship him. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We bless you today. You're so good, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord. Jesus, you're the king of glory. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. We bless you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Oh, we love you, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. We worship you in your presence today. We, we dance in your presence. We, we worship you today. We thank you. You're so good. You're so wonderful, Lord. We praise and bless you today, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord heard in my spirit several times the words fear not and that can be for all kinds of circumstances but there might be somebody who's going through an extraordinary time when the, the, the fear is trying to come on you and the Bible says fear not over 365 times it's in the word fear not you decide you have to make a decision not to fear. Well, how can I do that? I just, I feel it. Well, you don't go by your feelings. You go by what the Word says, and you say, fear not. So you choose to take care, cho choose to, to cast your cares upon the Lord, choose to trust God. I will trust God for my protection, for, for my provision, for my health, for whatever it is that I need today. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, and I choose not to fear. I will not fear. I'll not give into anxiety or into feelings. I will thank you, and I will trust you, and I will stand on your word. Whatever it is that you need, find a scripture in the word and stand on that word and say, I fear not. I fear not. But thank you, Lord. I trust in you. I trust in you, and you give, you've already given me the victory. I have the victory in this area, and I stand on your word, and I shall see the victory of the Lord. I shall see. I, I live it right now, today. I, I live that victory, and I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for what you've already done for me. It's done in Jesus' name. It's already done. I thank you for it. I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you to the choir, too. That's what we did um, for Easter. We did that one song again, so praise the Lord. We appreciate Kathy and all she does and all the musicians and all the hard work they do every week. Sometimes we don't thank, thank them enough, do we? Thank you, musicians. Thank you, choir. Thank you, everybody. And Kathy is here hours and hours and hours every week. I see her, because <laughs> I'm here. So I see her as she's here getting everything ready. And we just thank God for her faithfulness. Amen. And I kind of, I didn't think about, of course, we have a couple first time visitors today. Levi, you want to introduce, now he, I think he's been here for Children's Church, but has he, I don't think he's ever been here for Sunday. So why don't you invite, why don't you, you've never been shy, so I know, Levi, you will um, introduce your visitor. <laughs> what is his name? His name is Briar. Briar. Okay, Briar, we're glad to have you today. Amen. <laughs> and we have, behind Linda, we have Dana from Mankato. I didn't get your last name. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I moved here a couple years ago from California to Mankato, and I've just exhausted all the churches in my little tiny radius, so I decided to uh, widen my territory. Right? Right. 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 
Okay. Welcome. Thank you. I wanted to just briefly tell you, because I wasn't here on Tuesday night for Grub and Grow, I wasn't here for Wednesday for church, and um, I did my, I figured I was about a thousand miles that I did between Monday through, Monday through Wednesday. Um, Jennifer McQuiston, the lady that was in my church in McCook, she had passed away. She was taking dialysis, um, and she was living in Lamar's, Iowa. And she passed away and went home to be with the Lord. And last Tuesday, I did her funeral, but I got to go. My sister, Kay, in Canton, Braden, only live an hour from Lamar's. So I went to, to a Lions on Monday night, had, had a good supper, homemade supper my sister made. And we got to walk and talk, and it was a good time together. And then um, they all left early, so I left pretty early, too. And I was... It only took a little over an hour to get to Lamar's. It's just a nice drive there. That is, if you ever think that sounds familiar, I thought it sounded familiar. That's where Blue Bunny started. The Wells family started there in the early 1900s, and they had a contest of what to call their ice cream. It was something before that. It was a father. He just, he, his little son, I think, liked this little stuffed animal, this little blue bunny, and he thought he would try that, and he won the contest, and it stuck, and it's been Blue Bunny all this time. Now, they own a big milk processing plant, processing plant too. Now, that's owned by Camps, and then now there's Wells Blue Bunny, but the, Wells has sold it to another company, but they still, they're still going to keep the Blue Bunny name. Well, how I know all this is because I went down, you know how I am. I like, I like Tauds. I like to explore. And so I went downtown um, Lamar's, which is about 10,000 people, just a nice town. And they had a visitor center for Wells Visitor Center, and it's a big ice cream parlor with every kind of ice cream that Blue Bunny makes. And so I met Je uh, Je Jennifer's son, Jacob, and his girlfriend, Caitlin, drove all the way from Idaho, 17 hours, and we met there at the ice cream shop and got to sit and talk and have ice cream. <laughs> I had not seen him in five years since he graduated, six years since he graduated. So it was a really good time, and I was proud of him because he was 23 years old. He had to get his mom's funeral, do all the arrangements, take care of everything, and I helped him what I could do. And um, we ended up at the, the um, Good Samaritan Society in Lamar's. That's where she was at. Beautiful facility, wonderful people, and we probably had about 35 people there, and the, the administrator came in, introduced himself, talked a little bit, the director of nursing, the activity director, she was able to have Jennifer journal her last few weeks, spent much time with her, she said she is at such peace. And I had sensed that before, but she said she never regretted, she was only 51, but she decided she wanted to go home and be with the Lord. And she had decided to do that, and, and it was such a peace. And all these sweet little little ladies came in, and they all just said, Jennifer's my friend. Jennifer would, and, and when Jennifer was able to, to have one of those scooters, because it was hard to, for her to walk, and she could just go everywhere. And she'd go see all these people. And they just t were so touched by her. One lady that she went to dialysis with didn't even live at the facility, came just to say goodbye to Jennifer. It was very touching, very awesome. And then the next day, then I drove all the way home then, and then went to, all the way to McCook and back on Wednesday, and we had about 15 of us there at the park, and um, family was there, and a few friends, and a dear sweet lady, Ginger, from my church in McCook was there, and we just had a great time. And uh, the one thing, this couple that I took care of, their handicapped daughter, she gave me um, a nativity. Some of you have seen me talk about my olive wood nativity from Bethlehem, and I've enjoyed that. So I said, if I ever go to Israel, which I got to do in January, I, I got one at that, what I call it the superstore in Bethlehem, and I was able to give. Now, she wasn't back yet. She was on a trip to Puerto Rico. <laughs> She's involved in her church on the missions board, but her, I gave it to her husband, and he's going to give it to her. So one of these days we'll connect, but I was able to give her an activity. So it was, this was a great time. So I wanted you to know about that. God's doing great things, and he worked through that whole situation and was able to minister to the family. So I think that was wonderful, and we just appreciate that so much. So let's go ahead and take our Bibles and lift them up, and let's go ahead and, and say our confession together. 
This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be able to, to speak about your word, to pray, to pray fervently in righteousness. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here today. And thank you that you speak to us today and we receive all that you have for us. We thank you for, for you, the spirit of wisdom. And thank you, Lord, for all that you want to be said and done. And thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. We thank you for it and give you the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I wanted to talk about the theme of this year's National Day of Prayer is Pray Fervently in Righteousness. And I just felt really led to minister on those lines today. And I think this is wonderful that the National Day of Prayer is continuing. You know, there was several years ago, probably over 10 years, they tried to stop it. They couldn't stop it, though. And it's not going to stop. It's been going for over 60 years, and it's going to continue, okay? And so we just appreciate the National Day of Prayer and everyone that's involved. And you can look up National Day of Prayer Task Force, and there's all kinds of information. You could spend hours reading the history, you, and there's just all kinds of ways to pray. It's just a wonderful resource that you could have to look about National Day of Prayer. And so we're... I'm going to break it up here into three different segments, but our um, scripture. Oh, I forgot my joke. Let me do. Let me do my joke. I'm going to interrupt myself and do my joke. Now, this is James's joke he gave me, so I think you'll like this one. You may have heard this before. I think it's a good one. An elderly woman had just returned to her home from an evening church service when she started was startled by an intruder. She caught the burglar red-handed and yelled, Stop! Acts 2.38, which means turn from your sin. It's talking about. The burglar stopped dead in his tracks. The woman then calmly called the police and explained what she had done. As the officer cuffed the burglar, he asked, Why did you just stand there? All the old lady did was yell a scripture at you. Scripture, replied the burglar. I thought she said she had an axe and two 38s. <laughs> so, it worked. <laughs> it worked. Amen. So, praise God. The word works one way or another. The word works. Amen. Praise God. So, we are going to talk about pray fervently in righteousness and avail much. And we know that's King James, but we're going to talk a little bit. We'll get a little more modern here in a little bit, too. James 5, 16b. And then it says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, I, um, Kenneth E. Hagin, Brother Hagin, talked about this prayer quite often. And he would tell us about the Amplified Classic Edition. And I learned this. I thought, this is powerful. The earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man and when it says man it means woman too it means anyone makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working tremendous power available dynamic in its working that gets me excited right there i could preach that the rest of the time so first of all we're going to talk about pray fervently well, we don't talk about, oh, he was so fervent today. He had such fervent prayer. We don't say that very often, do we? So let's talk about what does fervent mean. Uh, Luke 22, verses 39 to 44, New American Standard Bible. Luke 22, 39 to 44. Let's talk about Jesus. And he came out and proceeded as he as was his custom to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples also followed. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and began to pray, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, 
Yet not my will, but your, yours be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him, and being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. So Jesus was praying very fervently. Fervently in the Latin means to boil. Boil. Okay, think of that. Now that's high intensity, isn't it? 212 degrees. Is that right, Don? Do I still remember that right? Boiling point? Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Thank you. And 100 degrees Celsius, right? I remembered. <laughs> okay. So 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, boil. So that's what fervent means. It also means stretched out, intent, earnest, zealous, heartfelt, continued. That's what the Amplified said, the heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man or a righteous woman. So on the night that Jesus knew that he would be betrayed, arrested, beaten, and sentenced to crucifixion, Scripture tells us that he went to the same place where he had frequently went with his disciples and prayed fervently to his Father. And you probably get tired of me saying this, but I've been there. I've been there. It's just, it, it's just like they said when you've been to Israel, and then when you read the Scriptures, like, I've been there. I can, I can know. I can relate. I can see in my mind what it looks like now. It's just pretty cool. Fervency flows from the heart. It's a humble pouring out of a sincere heart, seeking the heart and hand of God to move in our circumstances for his victory and glory. There's a passion in fervent prayer that incites the compassion of the Father as he hears his child's cry for help, direction, wisdom, provision, rest, or refuge. E.M. Bounds writes that fervency is not fuss or noise, but comes from the heat of a heart filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says we've been filled with the Holy Ghost in fire, right? We probably won't sweat blood, but rather shed tears in the tenderness of the trial we are taking to God. Supernatural strength lifts us as we praise Him and pray God's Word back to Him from a faith-filled heart that remembers He calls us to cast our cares on Him. I need a volunteer. Who wants to be my volunteer? Pa Levi, I was hoping. Briar, you can come up too if you want. I was hoping you guys would do that. Levi's seen this before. Briar, do Briar's thing. not coming up? I thought, he's too shy. He gets candy if he comes up. That's I'm going to let you do it. Now, don't tell my secret. I'm letting you see it here, though. Don't tell my secret. Now. I'm going to let you try it. Push that little button right there. Push that right there. Can I hear? Nope, you got to push it down. Now, open it. Wait, Quickly. I'll use it with my... Don't drop it. <laughs> okay, you got to try it again. Let me try it. Yeah. we got to refill. <laughs> Now, oops. Now hold it. There's the fire, Briar. That's real fire, so don't touch it. <laughs> That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Fire from the Word of God. So we can't let it go too long. There we go. We, that's the fire of God, okay? It will burn everything up inside of there if we keep it going too long. Okay, so that's the fire of God. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. That's being fervent. That's being fervent in prayer. That's coming from your heart. And when we pray, are we supposed to be fervent, Levi? Yes. So what do you think fervent means to you? To be respectful. No, um, to be, like, to do it a lot. Okay, do it a lot. It said continued was part of that. That's good, too. Are you supposed to really mean it when you're praying, or you just do it? Oh, I just want to get out over this prayer. I just want to be done. You're supposed to mean it. It's supposed to be really meaningful, and you really want to talk to God, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that prayer can change things, right? Yeah. And you know when you're praying fervently to God, things are going to change. Yeah. All right. Very good. You guys can each have a piece of candy. Thank you. Okay. Good job. Thank you. We'll put this.
this over here. Okay. Prayer is pouring your heart out to God. Prayer is talking to God. It doesn't have to be some kind of a formula. It needs to be heartfelt. And that's why I have my big old mushy heart here. <laughs> it's soft. you will Linda catch. <laughs> it, and you can give your heart to someone else. Did you know that? My heart for prayer... It, it, it's contagious. If I get excited about prayer, other people are apt to get excited about prayer too. And that's why we have the National Day of Prayer. Throw it to anybody you want to throw it to. That's what we're supposed to do is get other people excited about praying for our country. Now, we, one day we had, not too long ago, we had Don, we had like a huge amount of people here, 12 people or something like that for work prayer on Wednesday morning. We were excited to have 12 people. I mean, I know a lot of people are working. But, you know, it's hard to get people out for prayer. So, and I realize some of you probably are praying at home too, and some of you are working at school. But just be excited about prayer. And, get, and, and let it become contagious. And give your heart a prayer to someone else. And just let that be. That's what we want. All the Christians, we've been praying for the great awakening. Stop sleeping. Stop just doing your own thing and say, we have a country to save. And God hears our prayers. He's taking care of our country. We're not losing this country. And this, there's revival in this country. And it's going to continue. It's happening right now. And it will continue. It's all over the world. And it needs to continue. Amen? Amen. All right. You can keep it. Or you, okay. There you go. <laughs> Good job, James. <laughs> That's pretty good. So keep giving your heart out to others for prayer. Amen. Colossians 4.12. Colossians 4.12. It says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Sometimes prayer is like laboring fervently. It can be work, but it doesn't have to be hard and demanding. You know, you, people who love what they do, prayer can be the same way you can love what you do. You come into the presence of God, but sometimes it's like plowing ground in the Spirit. But it's important that we don't quit. It's important that we continue to pray. And we don't give up. And I believe this church has made a difference in this area. I've been here for 41, almost 42 years. Can you believe it? It'll be 42 in June. And what God has done through prayer in this area. And God, he works through people. He works through prayer. Amen? It seems that God can't do anything unless someone prays, right? Uh, John Wesley said that. And so that's important that we pray. 1 Peter 4, 8. 1 Peter 4, 8. And it says, Above all things have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. So when you have fervent prayer, you'll have fervent love. When you have fervent love for God, you'll have fervent love for other people. You'll have fervent love for yourself. You've got to love yourself before you can love others. You realize that? You've got to be able to forgive yourself before you can forgive others. It's all connected together. And we have to be fervent. We have to be heartfelt. We have to have that fire of God, fire of the Holy Ghost, burning on the inside of you. Think of that burning Bible. That's supposed to be happening to your heart. Don't let your heart grow cold. Keep your hot heart hot for God. The contemporary English version says, Most importantly of all, you must sincerely love each other because love wipes away many sins. Sincerely love. And love sincerely forgives and wipes away sins. Amen? Amen. Number two, we're righteous. We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You hear me talk about that a lot. 
Because it's life changing. When you find out who you are in Christ, when you find out that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, it changes your life. So that's so important to talk about that. Romans 10, 8 through 10, New American Standard Bible. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are preaching, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. And I like that version of it, and I like that phrase, because this is how you're saved, this is how you receive anything from God. You believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth, but for with a heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. When you believe in your heart, it results in righteousness. You become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? That's so important. Our righteousness in Christ just happens when a heart believes and receives him as their Lord and Savior. It is our new condition. Once set apart from God in our sin and now fully accepted in Christ, it's a personal relationship, not a family tradition or an extension of another person's faith, but an essential individual life decision that must be made for oneself, never received by default or passively. It is a gift from God we must choose to receive. And each one of us has to choose to be born again. You aren't, there's no grandchildren in God's kingdom. You can't be saved because your mother or your father believed God. You, now, that can be influenced you. And you can say, I, because they were born again, I want to be born again too. But just because they were born again doesn't mean I'm saved just because of them. I have to believe. I have to receive. I have to do it. I can't do it just because I can't just say, well, because my mom was saved, I'm saved. No, you have to trust God yourself. Trust in Jesus. God gave you the gift of life. You did not choose to be born. He gave you life, and then you gave your free will to make choices of how you want to live your life. You get to decide what priorities you have and who you will try to live for, who you will serve and worship, what you believe, and the all in heart, soul, mind, strength, and love you want to live out based on your belief. You know, every one of us decides what's important for us in our lives. We do what's important to it for us, don't we? And the things that don't, aren't important, we don't do. That's how it is. That's why there's a lot of, a lot of Christians who don't go to church. There's a lot, of, a lot of Christians who don't tithe because it's not important. It's not a priority. They put other things in place of it. Now I'm preaching to the choir because you're here. So, so you guys are faithful and you're wonderful. You know, we're, none of us are perfect. But what we need to do is do what God has called us to do and be the person that God's called us to, to be in our lives. We talk about the things that we love, our priorities or pursuits and our passions. It's why a grandparent can't help but talk about their grandchildren, right? Well, then that's why we should be talking about Jesus because that's who we love. That's who we know. And this nation, I love this nation. I love this state. I love being a... a, a an American. I love being a Nebraskan. And those who live in Kansas, you love being a Kansan. I, I totally understand. <laughs> and so we need to be people who love and the people that, that speak the word and people that are near to the heart of God. And because, of, because we are righteous, we have right standing with God, we can go to prayer and not be afraid to be in the presence of God. Come into his very presence because we have right standing with him. And one of my favorite scriptures, you know what it is, 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's what we just celebrated that at Easter time. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Jesus became sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are in right standing with God. We've been made righteous. I'm not a stinking, dirty, old, filthy, rotten sinner. Now, before I accepted Jesus, I was a stinking, old, dirty, 
rotten, filthy sinner. But because I've accepted Jesus, it will be 43 years this August that I accepted Jesus. That's hard to believe. 43 years ago, it will be that I accepted Jesus. And, 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 and I just love him more and more every day. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and we can pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Ghost, and we can expect to see results when we pray. We're not, well, I hope, God, you can do this. I hope. No. Hope's in the future. Faith is now. We need to have hope. And, and I have hope for my country, but I also, when I pray, I see that God's working. And I see that God, now I don't always see it all with these eyes. I see it through the eye of faith, and the eye of faith is in my heart. And I see God doing a work. And you see God doing a work. And you know that God is going to hear and answer your prayer, your prayer because of his word, and I stand on his word. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or a righteous woman makes great power available. Availeth much. That's what God does. Changes things. Prayer changes things. And we can see that, that God does that. We can go through history and see what God has done for our country and will continue to do for our country. It is the Christ-given condition of righteousness that assures us that God hears and answers our prayers. Then that we, we live as children of God, our prayers are answered in astounding and abounding ways that our earthly eyes and minds will never fully comprehend. And so... We can see that. We will see God answer and hear our prayers. Amen. Number three, avail much. We can avail much in prayer. Amen. James 5, 16, Amplified Classic Edition. We read this already. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. And I'm just going to use that word dynamic and it makes me think of who wants to help me? Who has not? Cohen? We'll just stand in front of the pulpit here. How are you, Cohen? Good. What grade are you in now? Fourth. Well, you're just growing up, I tell you. <laughs> so what, you look so much like your Uncle Daryl, I just can't believe it. <laughs> I had him when he was your age, and I was just looking at you today and said, that looks like Daryl. <laughs> okay, what is this? Looks like a dynamite stick. That's right. What do you do with dynamite? Throw it. Oh, you don't want to hold on to it, do you? <laughs> you don't want to hold on to it, do you? Yeah. You do want to hold on to it? No, you don't want to hold on to it. After you light it, right? Especially when you light it, you've got to throw it, right? Mm -hmm. Do you ever light firecrackers? Yes. And you're not supposed to hold on to them, are you? What happens if you hold that firecracker when it goes off? Your hand hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Has that happened to you before? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, you're supposed to get rid of it, right? Throw it, right? So when we pray for people, and it says that, that our prayers are powerful, what do you think that's going to do? You think God's going to hear it and do it, or is it just God, he don't hear it? He'll hear it, and he'll respond to you. He'll respond to you, won't he? Very good, Cohen. Very good. God hears and he answers and he responds to our prayers, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. So it's important to pray? Mm -hmm. Who should we pray for, Cohen? Jesus, we, God. Okay. Who, who, who here on the earth? We, we pray to them. We pray to the Father in Jesus' name. But who should we pray for? People that are hurting. Good. What, who is, what's an example of some people? So like... Say somebody like breaks their leg and they're going through a hard time. Oh, good. A person that broke their leg or a person going through a hard time emotionally, those are good examples. Mm -hmm. you, I really appreciate that. You had some good answers. I'll give you a piece of candy here. Thank you so much. Good job. <laughs> Okay, let's see where now I lost where I was at, okay. All right, God promises that our prayers avail much. What is much? A lot. A lot. <laughs> How do you measure much? 
Well, to give you God's perspective, the word in the original New Testament is P-O-L-U-S, polis. It's also the same exact word used to describe, I'm going to give you some verses here, God's mercy in 1 Peter 1.3. 1 Peter 1.3, we'll go through these quickly. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So it's because of God's mercy that we're saved in the same power. It's the same much. And, you know, we're saved, and, and he's given us so much when we're saved, hasn't he? Amen. Amen. And then it's also Jesus' glory in Matthew 24, 30. Matthew 24, 30, that same word. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay? So we are going to see, they'll see the Son of Man. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with power and great glory. We'll see his glory. Amen? And then our reward in heaven, Matthew 5, 12. Rejoice! And be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So when you get persecuted, it says we're supposed to rejoice and be exceedingly glad because great is your reward. So that reward is much. You're going to have much, and your reward is much. Much is much more than you might have first stopped. Much is much. <laughs> Our prayers invite God to bring his goodness and glory into our circumstances, relationships, communities, concerns, crises, and country. He avails his answers when we humble ourselves in the acknowledgement that we need him, and he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond all we could ever ask, imagine, or accomplish in our own understanding and strength. And that probably sounds familiar. Ephesians 3.20. Amen. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So you've got great power available to you because you know who you are in Christ and you can pray with power and authority. As we pour out our hearts in sincere faith-filled prayers in the right and righteous condition of Christ's authority and affection in our hearts, we watch with great anticipation for the much of God to prevail. Amen. So you pour it out. So what much availing, history-making, heart-drawing, stronghold-destroying, soul-saving, state-shifting, country-changing, God-glorifying prayers will you be praying for the National Day of Prayer? We encourage you to think about those things. What is God going to do and how he's going to use us this year? Now, I'm going to do another little illustration. And Brenda was out there to see my failure. <laughs> and it's a good thing to tra practice ahead of time, right? But I should have had a safety net instead of letting it go everywhere. <laughs> so it did. I, I am convinced that it's going to work now. We have faith. Who's going to help me? Who hasn't done it? Who wants to come up? Is it Sophie? What, what are you? Is that your name, though? Sophie, right? Well, you don't want to do it, huh? Lloyd really wants, Lloyd wants to do it. Okay. Do you trust me, Lloyd? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I trust myself. No. Well, I just poured water into you. Did you see me do it? Yeah. Okay. You trust? It's like standing out in faith saying, God, I'm believing you. I'm standing in faith. And if it doesn't work, then, it's the, then, then you don't work because I know you're working. So you trust me. So I'm going to dump this over your head. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I stand in faith because this morning I had a little mess. But he, he loves me enough he wouldn't get too bad. I'd have to clean all the gook out of his hair for him and help him out, right? <laughs> that took faith, boy. <laughs> yeah.
So, Lloyd, yes. does, does God answer prayer? Yes, he does. Has he answered prayer in your life? Yes. Do you think he'll answer prayer for others? Oh, yes. Do you think the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much? Yes. And you've seen him, God do that for you? Yes. And so should we come to the prayer breakfast on Thursday? Yes, and should, I will be there. Good. <laughs> should we pray the prayer that's on the back of our handout sheet? Yes. Should we continue to pray, or is our country too far gone? No, continue to pray. Amen. Amen. This is my country. I always say that when I pray. I know it's your country too, but this is my country. And I get, and you guys know when I get my dander up a little bit, and I, 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 I get like a bulldog, and I said, oh, no. No, you don't, devil. No, you are a defeated devil. And, and we know we need to get our dander up, and we need to say, hey, this is my country, and I'm taking it back, and I'm fervent in my prayer. And you can pray in the spirit too, pray in tongues. We believe in praying in tongues in this church. We also pre believe in praying in, this, in English and praying the Word of God, but we can pray in the Spirit too. And when you do that, and you do that with fervency, God hears, answers, and great power is made available. Would you agree, Lloyd? Yes. And, and would you believe that I have no, nothing but chocolate candy? <laughs> oh, you so, did it again, didn't you? you just <laughs> I have some alphabet cookies I'll give to you later, okay? Right. You like right. those. I know you like them. So I'll give you some, just remind me, I'll give you some alphabet cookies. All Thank right. you, Lloyd. Give yeah. him a hand. Right. <laughs> Lloyd can't have chocolate, that's why. <laughs> we always have a fun time about that. Okay. Just remember that we have the victory, amen? amen. It's already been done. Right. We know, we read the back of the book and we win, Amen. Amen. Uh, 1 Timothy 6.12. 1 Timothy 6.12. Fight the good fight of the faith. Lay hold of the eternal life to which you were summoned and to which you confess the good confession of faith before many witnesses. So Jesus has already won the victory. But every day, we fight the good fight of faith. You stand and you prevail in your own personal life. Amen? Mm -hmm. it, some people say, well, God is sovereign and he'll do what he'll do. And he'll just, he's going to do it no matter if I don't do anything. Well, I don't agree with that. I don't think you do either. Because God does his part, we have to do our part too. And we can affect other people for Jesus. And so what you do and what you say is important. And there are going to be people who may not go to heaven because you were not obedient to do what God called you to do. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that if God tells you to go talk to somebody, do it. God tells you to pray for somebody, do it. Make sure that you are obedient to what God called you to do. Don't worry about everybody else. Well, I don't care. Well, no, don't look at them. What did God tell you to do? Do your part. And then all of us doing the part together, we can do wonderful, awesome things for God. Just like Mrs. Hagen always talks about the, the puzzle pieces. And, and, and I, at the nursing homes, you know, I loved, the, my, one of my jobs at the nursing home was we had thousand piece puzzles. And, <laughs> and they were out there on this big table in the living room. And once they got it done, then it was our job to take the puzzle up I always had to take it up after they worked so hard. But it was to get another puzzle to make sure they had a puzzle out there that they could keep working on. So God knows that every piece is important. We're, we're, you're a piece of that puzzle, too. He's got a wonderful puzzle, this huge puzzle. And you are part of that. And, if you, and you know what's frustrating is when a piece is missing. You can't find it anywhere. Pretty much have to retire the puzzle. Can't use the puzzle because what good is a, a puzzle with one piece missing? So you are important, every one of you. Be diligent. Do what God's called you to do. And, and it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. God can use you right where you are. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day, for this time together, for your presence today, Lord and for your anointing. And just thank you that you just put it on our hearts, each one of us, to pray this week, 
to pray for our country, to pray for the seven prayer points for our nation, continue to pray in the spirit, to pray for our country, for National Day of Prayer. Do what you've called us to do, Father. We thank you for it. Help us to be diligent. If there's an area where we're not living up to where we're supposed to, we repent of that, Father, and help us to do that, to live right before you, and also to be diligent to, to pray and to, to do those things you've called us to do. Help us all to step up and to be the prayer warriors that we're supposed to be. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And if there's anybody here today or watching on Facebook today and you don't know Jesus, you haven't been born again, I want to give you an opportunity. The Bible says in John 3, 3 that you must be born again. And then we talked about Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes in righteousness and with the, with the mouth confession is made to salvation. So if you haven't done that, just pray that prayer with me today and believe this in your heart. Just say this with me. Dear Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. And be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for forgiving me and for cleansing me from all sin. Jesus, you're my Lord, my Savior, and my best friend. And I'll serve you, serve you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Make sure you get yourself into a Bible-believing church. And we have services here on Wednesday nights at 7 and Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. We love you. We'd love to have you be a part of the church. God loves you so much, too. Amen? Praise God. We have a sheet here where we take prayer requests. Are there any prayer requests today before we go? Yes, Kathy. Uh, Carol's band. Uh, Clarence Dove. Uh-huh. Right. And they, that was a while back, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, Jane. Oh. Yes, and I hadn't had a chance to call her, but that's what Darlene told me too. So, yes, we do need to pray for Carol Jess because she'll be staying at Harvard. So... Okay, that's. She's in pre hospital, and Dr. Lively picked it up. Okay, yep. Yeah, she's on oxygen 24 7 now. We saw her, Pastor Patsy and Tim and I saw her a week ago last Friday, so she's going to be staying at Harvard. So if you want, you know, that would be nice if you want to send her cards. We're going to continue to send her announcements and DVDs and, and all that. You know, we'll keep connected. But if you're on your way to Hastings or Grand Island, stop by Harvard there. It's a really nice nursing home. See her for a few minutes. She'd love that. I know she likes to have visitors. So please do that for her. Keep connect. She wants to stay connected with us. I know that. Yes, Briar? I don't know if I could hear what he said. What's His mom said, give me prayer for healing. What's her name? Carissa. Okay. You know what's wrong with her? Just not feeling well? Okay. What did he say? Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. I, I don't know about that. I'll just keep saying rain, okay? <laughs> but I don't want hail, and I do not want tornadoes. <laughs> Any of that, okay. Okay, we'll keep thanking God, and God's going to take care of us. Anybody else? Um, 
I think it, I think it's still on the prayer list. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Yes, um, Levi. When do you need that by? Do you know when he needs it by? Okay, well, he's well. Tell tell what he's doing. You want to tell what he's doing, Royce? Or he's going. He's going some. And Levi's one of them that will go, right? Yeah, him and his brother. Wow. All three of you guys are going to go. Okay. Okay. Money for nationals. For archery. Just his brother and Levi. Oh, okay. Okay. Anybody else? One last chance. Okay. Well, Father, let's, we thank you. Matthew 18, 19 is a prayer of agreement. We're agreeing together and touching these situations. Continue. We thank you for Carol Jeffs, that she's the healing power of God's flowing through her and touching her, and help her to just adjust to the idea of, of being there um, in Harvard, but that, and she will thrive and do well. And we just thank you for people to visit her and, and correspond with her, and just thank you for all that you're doing through her and for her family. Help them, Father, to get the have the, the people the help that they need to get her apartment cleaned out and do all the things that need to be done. We thank you for helping them through this time. And we lift up Briar's mom, Carissa, and we thank you that sore throat and headache have to leave, symptoms have to leave. She's the healed of the Lord. Just touch her, Father. And we thank you for rain, Father God, an abundance of rain. Thank you, Father. We speak it out and we call forth the rain. We thank you. It will not damage or do any damage anywhere, but we just thank you for the rain. We thank you. We agree and we're together in Jesus' name for the rain for this whole area, Kansas, Nebraska, and this whole area that needs the rain. And we thank you, Lord, for we're agreeing for the money for um, the Nationals, for the archery group, for <laughs> Levi and the others, members of the team. We just thank you for providing and then they will have all the money that they need. And we give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you all for coming today. We love you. We appreciate you. So we decided that there will be Bible study at Arlitz tomorrow. We will have Grub and Grow on Tuesday. There is baccalaureate tomorrow night at 7, if you'd like to come to the um, Harvest Christian Church. So, and then... The recept remember the kids' graduations and the receptions during this week. All right. We love you all. God bless you. Have a, yes? Oh, all the children that have been sitting up, you can go downstairs. Miss Linda will give you a prize. That's, thank you for saying that. So all, you, you've all done a good job, too. So go down and get a prize from Miss Linda. Good job, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>